boom, I got my ax and I got my shovel and I got them all tuned up and oiled up. Now, I might have a problem remembering how to put them back on the Jeep. Welcome to Team G503. I am your host, Scott Schiller. And yes, indeed, these tools have been riding on the side of Grandpa Haynes' 1946 Willis CJ2A for about four and a half years now. And what happens to them is, as time goes by, and I recommend this to everybody, so I've restored a bunch of axes and shovels, is you've got to sand this down after about a year or two, and you've got to put a couple uh, coats of boiled linseed oil on it, and they're all prettied up again. I've oiled up the heads. But they don't come off the Jeep very much, so... I couldn't really remember how to put it back on. So I thought, you know, what a great idea. Let's make a video on how to put the ax and the shovel back on the side of your Jeep. Now, mind you, mine is going back on a 1946 CJ2A and I put those tool indents in the side of it, which is something else we need to talk about because a certain manufacturer that I know, no names given out now, has manufactured panels because I've been asked a ton of times by a bunch of Jeep enthusiasts, how did you do that on your CJ2A? Because everybody wants to have the axe and the shovel on the side. And you keep uh, watching this channel and we'll let you know in the future because they're gonna be available very soon, the actual indents. And that's for your G503 vehicles as well, the Ford, GPW, and the Willis MB. All right, let's get to putting these on the side of the Jeep. I hope you enjoy the video. I'm gonna try to stay out of the frame here. It might be a little difficult so you can see everything, but I'll also try to show you from the top and bottom in uh, pictures and short little videos before we're done here so you can see exactly how this is done. The most important thing that you need to know is you need to make sure, now I know mine are, but you may, need to make sure that you've got the correct length straps uh, on your uh, axe bracket back there because if you don't, and you've ordered them from the wrong person, and they're too short, or they're made someplace where they don't really know what they're doing, it's not gonna work. So I'll just pull measurements on these for you. The forward shovel strap is 19 inches long. It needs to be that way. Let me get on the other side of the Jeep. Again, I don't wanna get in the way for clarity, and I'll show you what the lengths on these two are. The backside shovel strap, it's doubled over, and you see the buckle there, but that needs to be at least five inches long. And this is your ax strap right here. And you see the top here's got the buckle on it. The overall length of this one is going to be, let me get in here, like I had to say, I don't want to be in this frame here blocking the seam. This one's 15 inches long as well. And that's very important that you need to have the correct length straps to install the Pioneer tools. We're going to start with the ax. And you notice the fawn's foot there on the handle. This is the correct handle. You're gonna slide the fawn's foot in, do it horizontally through the front bracket there. It goes in really simple. Line it up here with the rear axe sheath. That goes up in there. And then your axe bracket rear, the lower one, comes up and holds the pole of the axe. We're gonna insert the bottom tang of the strap through the top side here. I hope you can see this, of that lower rear axe bracket. I'm gonna pull it tight like that. That'll draw that right into that axe handle. We're going to come up through the teeth there, and then we're going to pull down. You're going to get that nice and snug. And then you can grab here and you can seat those teeth, and then that strap is going to go through the top of the buckle just like that. And that's nice and tight, and that's not going to go anywhere, and your axe is not going to rattle around. Notice up here in the front that the handle is actually sitting in the front part of this bracket. It's not riding back here, it's not flopping around, and that's nice and secure and it fits perfectly in that indent. The shovel strap is a little more tricky. There's our shovel and you've got the two straps on that. Now, I've got two footman loops on here just because I saw pictures later. This was my grandfather CJ2A kind of dressed this up a little bit with the brass screws and painted the, the, the footman loops black. This is not like G503 but this is the same as it would be and your measurements would be the same on your Willis MB and your Ford GPW. So we take our shovel blade and we put that in the forward bracket just as such. It's right in the indent. Now here's where it gets fun. You're going to insert the long strap through the handle of your shovel, the D handle of your shovel. You're gonna pull it back. And this is the, and I'm gonna to have to show you this from the top side after I finish this, but this strap is gonna go back through that footman loop and it's a little difficult to get it back through there. This is the tough part. This is what I say, it's a little bit more difficult. Just kind of wiggle it through your footman loop. Mine are a little tight. The World War II ones that are chunky and nice wouldn't do this. These are the city ones, but back in the day when I did the 2A, 
I just had to have the fanciness and it's it's a little tight, but it'll go through there. We'll pop that through there just like that. It took a little doing, I'm not gonna lie to you, it did. I'm gonna come back through this way. So we've got a double loop through there and I'm gonna shoot this from the top and show you exactly what I'm talking about at the end of the video. That's gonna have to be pulled really tight. Here again on this bracket, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go through like we did in the X strap. We're gonna go through where the teeth are on the bottom. I'm gonna pull that nice and tight. And then hold your teeth in and put that tab through the back side of the buckle, just like that. And that's gonna be nice and secure on the side of the Jeep. Again, CJ2A, these panels are gonna be available. I know I keep letting the cat out the bag about that, but it's a cat that needs to be let out. Let me take the camera and shoot an angle down here. I can point out exactly what we did, but that's how you install the X and the shovel on your World War II Jeep. Okay, we'll look down here at the top as I promised, and you can see how that's looped around the shovel, back through the footman loop, and through the outside of the handle, and into the buckle, just like that. We'll look down here, and you see how the strap is centered in the lower bracket there. The buckle is behind the D-handle on the shovel, as such, and pulled nice and tight. All right, got them back on, and that's how you do it. It's the same on a G503 as how it is set up on my grandfather's uh, CJ2A, like I said in the beginning of the video. Watch for those panels coming out by Joe's Motor Pool. They're going to be available at Ron Fitzpatrick G Parts. And I didn't say that just yet, but I'm telling you, keep your eyes peeled. All right, my friends, if you'd like to follow along, we're doing the 1943 Willis MB. You can do so by subscribing. I'm personally inviting you to, do, you to do so. And click that little bell down there in the bottom so you know when we've released a new video. Until next time, my friends, keep it safe. Axe and shovel. Axe and shovel. Happy jeeping.